Good evening, and welcome to Sunday Evening Vespers. It's wonderful to be with you all. Just a few announcements. Um, on Monday and Tuesday of this week, the book study for Gift from the Sea will have its second session. And at Monday, it is at 2 p.m. in North Village in room 373. And on Tuesday, it is at 3 p.m in the gathering room, which is the room behind the security desk. On Wednesday is Dementia Caregiver Support Group, and the caregivers um, can meet in room 273 at 3 p.m. on Wednesday. And the social gathering for those who have memory loss will be in room 373 at the same time. And on Thursday, we have our connections meeting, our discussion group. That is in, in North Village at 11 a.m. in room 373, and at 3.30 in South Village in the club room, which is the room by the mailboxes. I want to say thank you for the Reverend Stephanie Allen for being with us this evening, and also thank you to Bobby Holder for playing the piano. We are back wearing masks because of the Wake County mandate, and um, we will not be singing. You feel free to pray the words of the hymns or just hum along. <laughs> Let us now prepare our hearts and minds by listening to the prelude. If you'll please join me in the call to worship from Psalm 111. Come, let us praise God together in the company of his gathered people. For the works of our God are unparalleled. Everything he does reveals his glory and majesty. Our God is full of grace and mercy, and his righteousness never fails. Come and worship all you who revere the Lord, for reverence and awe is the foundation of true wisdom. Now let us listen to and enjoy I Will Sing the Wondrous Story.
Will you please pray with me? Gracious God, give us humble, teachable, and obedient hearts that we may receive what you have revealed and do what you have commanded. Amen. Our first reading is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 15 through 20. Hear now the word of the Lord. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The second reading is from the Gospel of John in the sixth chapter, starting at the 51st verse. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat the flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died, but the one that eats this bread will live forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, okay. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. It's so nice to see you all. Hello, Spring War. I'm so delighted to be back. I'm Reverend Stephanie Allen. I'm at the Church of the Nativity, and several of my members live here. And it's just always a delight to be here and to be invited by my friend Juliana, because she's an old friend, and I love her so dearly. And you all are so lucky, but you know that, right? You know that. Okay, well, oh, goodness. I don't know if you have just turned off the TV with the news. Maybe you've stopped your newspaper subscription. No more news alerts, right? I kind of hope so, because the news this week has been, let's just say, not great, right? We got COVID cases that are on par with what we had in February. We've got rising deaths from COVID, increased hospitalizations, burned out healthcare workers. We're sitting here wearing masks again, a mask mandate again. And then the conflict around vaccines and masks and this and that. And if that weren't enough, like that, that would be enough, right? Like I would be content. That would be more than enough bad news to make me turn off my television. But then we get this beautiful report from the UN Commission on Climate that tells us that our earth is in serious trouble and that we need to take action actually 20 years ago, but we need to definitely do it now. And that we need to go ahead and get used to living 
with extreme weather events. So again, not great. And then this week, we watched as, in the midst of all these climate things happening, Germany's underwater and Afghanistan is slowly collapsing bit by bit, and we're watching it unfold. While here at home, we've got this massive heat wave out west. For any of y'all who are from out west, have family out there, you've been here. This is unprecedented. They don't have heat like this. They're not equipped for it. And then the fires. Fires uh, everywhere, raging. And just when, I mean, that, that's enough, right? But, and then there's a nice earthquake in Haiti. The one place, right? The one place that can't handle anything else. And they're hit by an earthquake. Okay, now you all want to go home and climb into bed and pull your covers up and say, Juliana, never ask her back again. <laughs> but I got good news. Because now that we're low, <laughs> the only place we can go is up. There is good news. There is good news in our scripture tonight, and there is certainly good news in the living bread that we are reminded of in our gospel reading. We've been hearing for weeks about this living bread and the person of Jesus, who was God, who lived, who died, and who was brought to life again so that we do not fall into the despair of the problems and the crises of this world, that no matter what happens in this world, in this time, or any other, we have the power to live in hope because we know that none of this is the end. The living bread is there for us. And I mean, my goodness, I opened my, my scripture earlier this week to look at the readings, and there was a community of the church of Ephesus, which we think actually this letter, we, you know, it's, it's, it, the whole book is a, a letter. We think it was probably a letter not just written for this little community in this particular place, but other little communities. It was called a circular letter, and, and it would have been passed around. So it tells us, too, that not only was this little community of these people of the church in Ephesus, of the Ephesians, that they were struggling but these other new communities that were trying to follow this God, this Jesus Christ who was resurrected, that they struggled too. That the message of resurrection is glorious and beautiful and powerful and wonderful. And yet, how do we live now, they are asking. How is it that we live day to day because the world really hasn't changed? Right? And I think we could say that too. I'm feeling a lot of similarities with this, right? The world has not changed, but yet the way we relate to the world has completely been turned upside down. And we don't know how to be. So many assumptions that we take for granted, this little church in this little place, so many things that we thought that's the way it was. We thought you died when you died, right? But no, it turns out that's not true. So if that, that single assumption has to be questioned, it means everything else has got to be questioned too. Your whole system of belief completely has to be deconstructed. That's scary because not only are you doing that for yourself, you're having to live in community with all these people that you did not necessarily ask for. And they got their own ways of deconstructing, and it might not align with yours. So we get this beautiful piece just tonight, just a portion, but the whole book. Go home and read the whole book, because this is great. Be careful how you live. Be careful. But not in a finger-wagging or else kind of way. And I think that's really, really important for us to hold on to now. Because I don't know about you, but I'm exhausted. Are you exhausted? If you're not watching the news, I don't blame you a bit. We have no reserve left. We are physically tired from what our bodies and our minds have experienced over the last year and a half. So if you're feeling angry or sad or upset or depressed or despairing, that's absolutely understandable. We've got nothing left to then be faced with, oh, everybody put your masks back on. <laughs> And we will, and we do, but man, we are tired. So be careful is actually 
a loving invitation. Just like us putting our masks back on is actually an act of love, even though we might not feel very loving in our hearts about it right now. <laughs> Be careful how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. I mean, what a commentary on today, right? So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So how are we to live? How did this community then live through this tumultuous time? How do we live right now where it feels like everything we've taken for granted for so long has been taken away from us and continues to be? How do we live not just with a promise of resurrection someday, but the resurrection that is happening, the new life that is being given to us this very moment. Well, that's the living bread. I think you all probably know that. That is the living bread that Jesus is talking about. And, and it's interesting. I love this scene with, with with Jesus, I, I kind of picture him, and he's got these people who are listening, and you got your side crowd over here, and you got your people here on the front row, like hanging on every word, and then you got your folks in the back, and like, I don't, I don't know about this. And, and, and just as a quick aside, I do want to say, and you all know this, because I know you do Bible study, and I know you're very smart, learned people, that when they say Jews, they're not saying that Jesus himself is not a Jew right? These are Jesus's people. They're all Jew of the Jewish faith, right? He's talking about the particular differences within these people who are listening to them. And so our translation is not the greatest and says just Jews. So I just, just, but like I said, I don't want to belabor that because you know, you know. So anyway, but if, I think it kind of helps us also imagine then these different, you know, you've got your scholars and you've got your religious authorities, you've got the disciples are there, you've got people who've just wandered up. Like you've got a lot of different ears listening and they're not understanding. They're not, because Jesus is completely ripping apart and deconstructing what they thought was true. What is true is that they are a chosen people, and God sent them manna when they were in the wilderness that took care of their physical needs. And he's saying, yes, but what I'm talking about is even bigger than that. And if it's even bigger than that, you have no idea how to live, because I've just questioned the fundamental assumption of how we do live. So... He is saying, I am the living bread. I mean, it's, it's in all our hymns, right? All those wonderful hymns about drinking and, and eating together, the Eucharistic feast. But it's also, I think, important, and this is another kind of piece of translation, that what Jesus is also talking about, and some of the words that he uses, it's translated the same here, but, but he, gets, he gets earthier in it. He's, he talks about feeding as in, like, tearing your mouth into a hunk of meat, right? Like, ah! <laughs> and, and, like, it, you chew and chew and chew, and it's something that's going to stick with you, right? Like, it is going to last you. It is going to nourish you. It is going to keep you going because it is vital to your existence. It's not the dainty little communion wafers that we Episcopalians like because they're clean and they're not messy and they kind of dissolve on your tongue. No, this is a big old hunk of bread, right? And you just rip it apart and crumbs go everywhere, right? This food, this Jesus, this living bread is something that means we lack for nothing. It fills us completely. It gives us what our bodies need. It gives us what our souls need. It fills us so we want for nothing. This is what new life is. It means we get down into what brings us joy. What brings us life? What are the things that we love? What are the smells that remind you of home? Who are the friends that you talk to and they know you instantly? And you pick that conversation right back up. What are, what are the things that feel good on your skin? What, is it, what does it feel like to walk outside before it gets real hot and you can smell the dew? Yeah, here in North Carolina, we got to be careful of that, right? you got to get up early right now. 
What, what does it feel like to sit inside watching the rain pour right now? I think what Jesus is talking about, where our answer of how we're going to get through this is how we live in our bodies, how we breathe, how we eat, how we enjoy the pleasure, the things that bring us pleasure and give us life. However, but, <laughs> but to go back to Ephesians, which is funny because where I stop with discerning what the will of the Lord is, which is I think is what we're asking to do, right? We're discerning. How do we live like this? We are trying to figure this out, this discernment as a, our communities. And then there's, there is some advice here. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. Now, I got to tell you, I'm an Episcopalian, so it was really hard to say this this morning because Episcopalians are known to enjoy their wine, okay? So I know other denominations, that's not as much of an issue. So, but I got to tell you, right? Like, I think that that is one of those, there's nothing wrong with enjoying a glass of wine. Maybe you did. There's nothing wrong with enjoying a great decadent dessert. Maybe you did tonight. I think that's the kind of joy that we're talking about here in being present in our bodies. But be careful if it becomes destructive. I think what we're hearing is that admonition that even when we feel despair, even when times feel hard, we have to ask where that line is for the things that bring us pleasure, bring us joy, that do not turn destructive. And that is the difference between the living bread and everything else. So, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves. So that caught me too, because well, we can't we can't sing right now, and it's awful, <laughs> isn't it awful? Because we got to too. It's like we had it, and then it got taken away. But maybe, maybe this is the getting a cup of coffee with a friend. That that's how we sing songs right now. Maybe this is making sure to call someone we love. Maybe this is going out for a walk outside. Maybe this also is talking about how we express our joy of the Lord in our everyday existence. Because remember, resurrection isn't someday. Resurrection is right now. So in the meantime, we can turn our radios up, <laughs> right? We, if we can't sing together, there are other ways that we can sing spiritual songs among ourselves, which again, I think is important. This is not just about me. It's not just about us as individuals. This is about how we live as community. And you all live in a community in a really particular way. And it's a community that cares for each other, that knows each other. So how do you express joy here in your community as you are supporting and caring for each other? That also is living bread. And I think that that's what our scripture is reminding us of how we are going to get through this. Making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times, and for everything in the name of the Lord. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm having a really hard time to give thanks to the Lord for all the bad news I heard this week. Hmm. <laughs> What do we do with that? Well, again, I think the answer is in what we do with our bodies in prayer. And I think there are two things that we can remember about our readings tonight and that I think are going to get us through this thing to remind us of the living bread that is going to continue to nourish and sustain us as we do this. And one is the prayer that comes through simply breathing sitting down and breathing in and out. 30 seconds, five minutes if you're feeling ambitious, right? But breathing and focusing on nothing except our breath moving through our bodies. Because it's remarkable to me that God himself decided 
out of all the creatures, out of all the things that God could possibly be, God breathed. Jesus breathed just like you and me. Air filled his lungs, and he was silent and listened for the word of the Lord to come to him and tell him, it is time to rest. It is time to listen. It is time to be. How do we refill those souls that feel so exhausted? We breathe. Now, that's one form of prayer, the breathing. But there's another form of prayer that I mentioned as well, is the praying for each other, intercessory prayers. Praying for this world, crying out to God to be here, to deliver us, to deliver one another, to bring healing, to fix this mess, right? <laughs> or to show us what we're supposed to be doing to fix it. I don't know. And the thing about that prayer, as you can tell from me already, I'm getting worked up, right? That prayer turns into lament. If you think about lament, the prayer of lament, we need to be doing that too. We need to be calling upon the Psalms and also in our own words saying, why? Why, God? Why is this all happening? Why in this particular time, in this particular place, we did not ask for this. <laughs> we did not do anything to deserve this. What is this? That's lament. You all have read your Psalms. You know what the lamentus does. Ah! <laughs> that was very elegant. Yes, I know. Read the Psalms. They're much more elegant about it. But really, that's what it is. It's a cry from the very depths of our soul to God. And then it's not solving the problem. I think that's another beautiful thing about lament. It doesn't make you come up with a solution. It's just handing it to God. And then if you think about those psalms that are psalms of lament, it's usually the psalmist saying, well, but, you know, smite my enemy, God. But, hey, you know, you're God. You know what's best. I'm going to leave it in your hands, right? <laughs> it's surrender. It's the same thing we're doing when we breathe. It is surrender and trust that God has got this. God has got us no matter what is going on in the news. And really, this living bread that nourishes and sustains, it's going to bring us to a deeper relationship with God through all of this. That we have been given an opportunity as we are called, whether we ask to be called or not, to live in this time with all of these things happening, we have been called to go deeper with God, to trust that God has got us, that God is never going to let us fall, that resurrection is happening right now, even when it feels like all hope is lost, that God is here. May we go deeper. May we allow ourselves to let God change us, change our hearts to surrender and be closer to God through all this. We may not be grateful, but we may see it as opportunity, opportunity to love God, opportunity to love each other, and opportunity to be part of the living bread that nourishes, that sustains, and brings new life. Amen. Our next hymn is O oh, Four Thousand Tongues to Sing. Thank you.
Now let us pray the prayers of the people together. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all of God's creation, for all people throughout the world, for those of us gathered here, and for all people in their daily life and work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and for those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are in any need, sickness, or any trouble, especially Lynn Schreiner, Wilma Miller, Steve Billy, Barbara Fries, Joanne Herod, and for all of the employees and staff at Springmore who are tired and relying on God to inspire us once again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the departed, especially Eunice Toussaint, who died this evening. Pray for those who have died. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now let us pray with one voice as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our final hymn is, Come We That Love the Lord. Before we go, a blessing. Remember, each and every one of you, you are one in whom Christ delights and dwells. You live in the strong and unshakable kingdom of God. The kingdom is not in trouble, and neither are you. And the blessing of God, the one creator, redeemer, and sustainer, be upon you this day and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.